first thing I want you to know about me is that I loved to play golf and I loved to fish. Now I realize that doesn't sound like much of a legacy but it fits very well for the community that we spent the most important years of our lives and where my career grew by leaps and bounds far beyond my wildest imagination and where we raised our two daughters and where we we played a role in the development of what would one day become hometown USA my journey to Glens Falls was pretty circuitous I, George Dewey Mead, was born in December of 1898 in Scranton, Pennsylvania. I have no memory of Scranton, Pennsylvania because a few months later, my parents, William and Mina Mead, moved to Kansas City, Missouri. And a few years after that, they decided to move back north, and we settled in Hartford, Connecticut. Now, I don't know too many people that got their start in business because they had the ability to hit a baseball. But the Hartford Indemnity Company hired me because I was a fairly decent high school athlete and they placed me on their baseball team in the Hartford League. And I played the, that entire season. Then at the end of the season, they gave me a job in the automobile department. Now the automobile department was growing and maturing at about the same time I was. And at one point, they had made me the manager of the department during World War I. And I was technically still a teenager. The next 10 years was a, a whirlwind of change. I, uh, I met a, a young lady. Her name was Helen King. Uh, she did me the honor of becoming my wife in October of 1921. The greatest thing about Helen was that she readily accepted the changes in my career that were about to come. Because in 1922, I was promoted to the position of underwriter and transferred to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the place of my birth. And uh, then, after six years there, I decided that if I wanted to move up further in the company, I was going to have to move, so my time there ended. Our next stop was quite a bit shorter. I was made a manager in the Columbus, Ohio office. And uh, I, re I regarded it as a, another step up the company ladder. And coincidentally, that's how I came about to settle in Glens Falls. I was brought to Glens Falls as an underwriter when the Glens Falls Indemnity Company was organizing in 1927. And I knew that this was going to be our permanent home. I did have some regrets because, you see, both of our parents and the rest of our family still lived far away. Helen's and my folks still lived in Hartford and my brothers 
Gerald and Asa had careers, one in Connecticut, the other one in Pennsylvania. But I resolved to be a dependable cog in the insurance wheel that would, would grow the Glens Falls Indemnity Company over the next three decades. I had the good fortune to earn the position of superintendent of agents for the Commerce Casualty Company. And then when the, and I was made a vice president. Then when the company merged with the Glens Falls Indemnity Company, I became a vice president there. And in 1937, they made me an executive vice president and elected me to their board of directors. I uh, managed in that position over $16 million in assets. And at that time, the company employed between the home office and, uh, and the field offices about 850 people. I remember the first trip we took for a vacation. We went out to Chicago and we saw the uh, Century of Progress Exposition in 1933, it was August. But although it was mostly pleasure, there was a business aspect to, to it as well because in those times, Chicago and Glens Falls shared a lot of uh, industry connections. Well, It was also at a difficult time because of the Great Depression. But I am proud to say that the Glens Falls Indemnity Company, even during those difficult times, continued to grow and prosper. And more importantly, the employees of the company continued to enjoy a, uh, a comfortable lifestyle. And I continue to ascend the company ladder. Well, life is more than just work. And at that time, Glens Falls was growing and, and prospering. And I Helen and I decided that this was, we needed to have a real home to raise our two daughters. So we moved into a very charming part of the city, Horican Avenue, and we lived in the Kensington Court area. Our two daughters went through the Glens Falls City School System, did very well. And as a family, we joined and were active in the uh, First Presbyterian Church. And I continued to follow my passion of playing golf and fishing and took many trips along with some like-minded friends throughout the Adirondacks to fish the pristine ponds and lakes and, and streams. I guess I should tell you a little bit more about my daughters. Both Betty and Barbara graduated from Glens Falls High School in the early 1940s. Betty went on to a junior college in Pennsylvania to study art and actually received a first prize award for one of her paintings Oh, and she was also elected queen of the winter carnival there. From there, she continued her studies in New York City at the School of Fashion Design. And as fate would have it, the two girls graduated from college on the very same weekend. 
So we made a whirlwind trip into New York City for Betty's graduation. And then we all traveled with Barbara to uh, Massachusetts, Cambridge, Massachusetts, for Barbara's graduation from Radcliffe. Now, a few months after her graduation, Barbara got engaged. She met a young man that was originally from Oklahoma, and he had recently graduated from Harvard University. And he became a college professor. He also wrote his first novel. It was called The Generations of Man. And after that, they decided that they wanted to move to Paris. And in Paris, he became a full-time writer, and they raised their son and, and daughter there. Helen and I spent the remainder of our time in Glens Falls. I continued with my career with the Glens Falls Indemnity Company. Oh, and in 1943, the Glens Falls Post Star wrote an article about me. And it was a very glowing article. It was on the occasion of me being named president of the Glens Falls Indemnity Company. And my wife and daughters were very proud of me. And I really, the article made me somewhat embarrassed. I retired from the insurance company. 1962, and the year before that, 1961, they made me uh, chief executive officer and elected me chairman of the board of directors. After my retirement, I got more and more interested in the city of Glens Falls. I had really come to love the city. So I, I became a director of the area community chest. I supported the Glens Falls Association for the Blind and became a member of the Masonic Temple. In, uh, in 1972, my Helen passed away after a difficult battle with cancer. And that's when I became an avid fundraiser for the Warren County Cancer Fund. Enough about my career. If, if I may, I'd like to tell you a couple of other stories that are unrelated. Like my attachment to this old driver here. Now, as I told you, I love baseball. But you know, as the years go on, you become a little less competitive, if you know what I mean. So I decided to become more adept at swinging this club. Well, in 1934, the Postar Sports page had an article about me. I put it in my journal here. I'll read it to you. And I quote, One of the best cards turned in recently at the Glens Falls Country Club was a 73 by George D. Mee. Me. <laughs> the card included birdies on the first, ninth, and tenth holes. Now, for those of you that don't know, the Glens Falls Country Club is a par 71. I shot a 73. Only two over. Well, in 1935, I won the club championship. Before I joined Helen here in 1979, I had made arrangements for my entire estate to be given to my two daughters and my five grandchildren. Evidently, my love for this city rubbed off on the two girls because 
they took a substantial portion of that inheritance and they donated to the Crandall Library, Glens, Found, Glens Falls Foundation, and the YMCA. And they did it in my name for which I am eternally grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much for your kind attention and enjoy the rest of your day.